Hey everyone, today I wanted to make a guide for the Arcane River weekly special content which was just updated in the Savior June 2023 patch, and I have to say, it's a rare Nexon dub, I love the change. They made the uh, Vanishing Journey through as Farah special content now weekly instead of daily. You can clear it three times a week and it is affected by your quest reduction for leveling past the area. So if you're level 250, you only have to do these PQs once and then you can just quick clear. And I started to actually do these weeklies on some of my alts again, just because it's a very fast way to get 45 symbols from each area. And I just wanted to go over each one and the changes here. So Vanishing Journey hasn't changed too, too much. Um, the first stage is exactly the same. Uh, you want to collect those blue orbs whenever they show up. They give you 10 extra Erda. I usually like to interact with the machine in the middle when I'm at like 60 to 70. That's usually enough for me in case I get screwed over by the uh, field that deletes your power orbs. Uh, the difference here is phase two, you always go to the worm cave now. It used to be kind of weird how you got to either the worm cave or the kill, two, kill for two minutes map. Uh, so I now just get the blue orbs here. I used to wait for reds, and I try to push all of them at the same time, which is a mistake. Uh, I've recently started to just do like three at a time. Yeah, I think I realized like, wait, I should be doing three at a time because six is just too much to push at once. The deletion field right there can just really slow you down and fuck you over. So yeah, uh, you just push, uh, I push four purples and two blues in. It's usually what I'm able to get done here. And you always go to the worm cave and the worm cave is totally the same. Uh, you just hold down the interact key on the machines to push them back until they go back and you kill little worms in case you need more urda they will fill your urda back up so i just put down this night lord skill that just clears the bottom part of the map and that's enough to keep me topped off for the rest of the mission so we don't need to see the rest of vanishing journey that's about the same but it's so so nice 45 symbols easy in the blink of an eye here just speed up real quick here. Yep, quest clear. And you don't get symbols in your equip inventory anymore. You actually get uh, a used ticket item here. So this is an untradeable item, but it's so much nicer to have this just stack infinitely in your use inventory instead of having to constantly micromanage your equip inventory. It's also honestly a big time save to not have to do that. Uh, so we're gonna go over to Hungry Mudo. Hungry Mudo hasn't really changed at all, uh, but they did remove easy, normal, hard difficulties. It's all just one difficulty now, so you don't have to go through a weird menu and accidentally you go in the easy mode, you have to exit to go back into hard or whatever. Uh, so other than that, Hungry Mudo is the exact same as it was before. Uh, there is a recipe guide on the Maple Fandom Wiki, which I will link in the description and it has all of the recipes if you get a mystery recipe and you're not sure what ingredient you need uh if you're like me and have a poor memory uh it's very very helpful to look until you finally uh are able to realize like oh that's this one or oh that's that one it's i'll have that linked in the description for you uh it was handy for me uh at least when i was trying to memorize these recipes for the first time whenever i got question marks in them you can kind of tell like, oh, there's a one, so it has to be the slurpy fruit, or oh, there's a 10, it's probably like the feathers of the claws, but it's just a nice little secondary confirmation for you. So we'll skip through the rest of this since don't need to watch that, it's all the same. Uh, yep, and again, we get the f quick clears here because I'm at least level 240. I don't get quick clears for all the areas on this character yet, but the ones that I can, it's quite nice. Uh, Latchline actually got a new piece of solo content here. Uh, it's a lot better for anyone of any power level now before you used to have to be very, very stacked in order to do anything. So to explain this, uh, on the top underneath your uh, timer, there's a bar with nine question, well, eight question marks right now and one piece of furniture. So right now it's a piano and there will be a piece of furniture on the bottom of every floor in the grid on the top left and you just want to go around and 
once you find the piece of furniture that's currently active, you kill all the mobs in that room, and then you interact Harvest Key with it. So I usually go around and I say, oh, okay, uh, I got a clock, I got a, and I got the piano, so I try to remember in my kind of clockwise rotation, or, or counterclockwise rotation around this map, uh, what piece of furniture I run into. And if you, for some reason, clear a room and interact on the piece of furniture that is not the correct one, it just respawns the mobs, you know, it's just kind of a waste of time. But, uh, yeah, so I just kind of go around, I find the furniture, you gotta do it nine times, and hopefully your memory is better than mine, and you're able to memorize nine words. <laughs> Because the furniture is random in each of these rooms, but uh, yeah, sometimes I it takes me a bit to be like, oh, I, I didn't see this one yet, or I did see this one, but I don't remember what room it was in, but uh, yeah, it's, it's honestly a, a big improvement overall. It's much more uh, beginner-friendly and low-power level friendly than it used to be. You used to have to be incredibly strong to clear the higher floors of Dream Defender in order to get a reasonable number of symbols out of this, uh, but yeah, this is much, much nicer now. Um, but we'll go ahead and skip through the rest of it, since that's the main idea. You just go through all the rooms here, and kicks you out, you get your select a symbol coupons. It's tro it drops you out to the right of the portal here, because that's where it used to do it, but they moved the NPC to the left. It's kind of weird that they did that, but it is what it is. Uh, Spirit Savior changed a little bit. Uh, it's honestly nicer. You have 10 minutes now. You want to maximize your minimap when you enter, just so you can see where all of the Rock Spirits are. The Rock Spirit HP was reduced a little bit. Uh, the dude still chases you, but as you can see, you have no HP bar anymore. So if you get hit by a big uh, Toxic Spirit, it's no longer like, well, I guess it's game over. Um, now it's just like, oh, well, I have 10 minutes, so what, I screwed up, I can just get my uh, Rock Spirit stacks going again, no worries. Um, it used to be kind of, like, e e even with how much I actually like this PQ, I know a lot of people don't really like it, um, I would even still get hit by it, and I've done this, like, every day for over a year. But uh, that aside, it's, it's much, much better now. Uh, just the removal of the HP bar was just huge. Um, and reducing the rock spirit HP was huge because uh, sometimes when you get here on, on a character, you just don't do enough damage to one tap the rock spirits that are stuck, and that is it lets the toxic spirit catch up because he speeds up all the time when you get new rock spirits. Um, but the PQ ends when you get 10,000 points automatically, and that's all you have to do. Uh, you don't. It doesn't like let you tr try to get any more than 10k points, it's just automatically like, hey, you're good. And I like that, because I used to have like a minute left and I'd have to, you know, grab my mouse, click the retreat button, but uh, much, much better now. Very nice change. Uh, Moras is the exact same. It just gives you the select symbols now. I hadn't done it on this character yet, but I wanted to just briefly talk about all of them, so I went ahead and went in here. Uh, 10 minutes to do this, it's pretty self-explanatory. You fill up the yellow gauge on the top, you interact harvest key on the crystal uh, next to the enemy that pops up now and again. Uh, I usually just look at the minimap, I don't really look at the like indicator that shows up on the just overview on the UI. Um, but a way you can kind of speed this up, aside from just clearing the mobs quickly, is you can stand in the middle, and there's portals that will take you to either side. Uh, so the portals on the right that I'm standing on right now, that'll take me to the left. The portals on the left will take you to the, to the right-hand side. Um, so uh, just standing in the middle in general is something that you can do to speed this up a little bit. Uh, and the last summon, instead of having to fire one laser at him, you just need to fire three at him when it's at nine. And that's really, that's more ass. Um, it's kind of boring, but it is what it is. Uh, your HP bar, unless you go like AFK, it just won't ever deplete down to zero. There's really no risk in this PQ, which makes it nice in a way. 
Um, but we'll go ahead and skip through the rest of that since don't, that's more ass. And now we're at Asphera, which is my guild's HQ. Uh, I also hadn't done Asphera Guardian on this character yet, so I went in. Uh, they did not change this one either. Uh, I did this a few times just to confirm that. Uh, and so you just kill a bunch of these mobs on the left until your blue meter above your HP bar there is full, and then you'll have 10 shots in the cannon. So while that's happening, uh, I'll also link this in the description. Oop, that's the wrong thing. I'll also <laughs> link that in the description. Uh, but uh, there's a handy and dandy guide that someone on Reddit ma made. I am an asshole and don't have their name up. What is it? Uh, the post was by Calligrapher Quiet 586 so thank you if you're the one who made this guide. Um, but you'll get two different layouts. So there's two mini-map configurations. I have this first one. I just look at the leftmost, top leftmost uh, red orb and see how much space it is to the one that goes like 45 degrees diagonally down from it. So that's one layout. And then this other layout has has one a lot closer to, to that one on the top left. So that's how you can tell which layout you have. And then there's a guide that tells you, hey, where do you need to shoot? So in this case, I need to shoot three times at this first big tick, two times closer to that uh, second big tick, three times a little bit in between that second big tick and the next tick, and, and so on and so forth for this one. Uh, and sometimes you do have to adjust it very, very slightly from this guide. This is a rough guide uh, because the uh, dimensional gates that you're shooting here do actually uh, have a random size when they're generated. So sometimes there's a small one and you just can't hit it with the regular guide, so you have to move it up or down a tick. Uh, and also you need to have your sit hotkey on your keyboard in order to actually use this turret. Um, you, it's not the interact harvest key for whatever insane reason. Uh, Nexon is the reason, um, I guess. But yeah, that's uh, Asphera Guardian. You need to have the sit hotkey. And uh, really, really awesome change by Nexon here. Really, really glad that they changed these quests. It's just so much of a time save. Even if you get a few less symbols every week, the time is just invaluable here. So... Hopefully that helped y'all, uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.